experiences and things about her past life, which I hope I, I know we're all going to enjoy. You can go. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh huh. I'm ready. In the year of 1898, my folks were living in Iowa, and they had uh, two little boys and a girl, and had just buried a little five-year-old boy that had passed away, which nearly killed them. Dad was going downtown one day to shop in Iowa, and two young fellows were hawking on the street. Now, I'm just talking. Go west, go west. Dad walked up to them and listened, and they were from Cole, Oregon, and they were the railroad company had sent them back to Iowa to uh, get people to come out and settle the west. So Dad talked to them for a little while, took some literature home and gave it to Mother, and got to talking to some of his neighbors, and they all decided that they were going to to move out of Iowa and come west. So four families came together. Uh, the Wolf family settled in Union. The Crease family bought a farm out by Hot Lake. One family went on to Union, Oregon, and mother and dad settled in Cove. And soon after they settled in Cove, they bought a, a little piece of property up in High Valley, and uh, Dad decided to build a new house. So he did. He got timbers out of and started to work and build a nice new house and build a new barn on the High Valley Road, one and one half miles out of Cove. The house was built on a slope facing west. Edna was born in this house. But the wind blew so hard, mother was so frightened, she was so afraid the wind was going to blow the house down, that she made dad go to the timber and cut some poles to prop the house up. So he did. I don't imagine he was very happy having to prop up a new home. About five years ago, a young couple bought the place and was restoring it with early day furniture. Five years ago, now that would be what year? 87. Yeah, about. 1997. Right. Uh -huh. No, 1987. Uh, the old house was still standing, minus the poles that Dad had had to prop it up 75 years ago. Hank and I went, went all through the house. It seemed to me that I could just feel my mother and Dad's presence as I went from room to year, room. Here was the big glassed-in windows that Dad had added for Mother's house flowers, which she always loved so much. The old family orchard was in full bloom. The day we visited, a spring was ditched and running water down past the house. I looked at the old barn still standing and I could visualize the incident that had nearly cost Edna her life when she was around two years old, maybe younger. My dad was plowing up in the orchard and my sister, Anne, and Raymond and Mel, Judd, they called him, decided to run up and, or decided to pull the baby in the wagon and go up and see what their dad was doing. Well, they got as far as the barn and a ladder was leaning up against it. They dropped the little wagon handle and run on up into the orchard where their dad was. The first thing he says, what did you do with the baby? They told him, and he said, you get back there immediately. That little baby will get hurt. Well, when they got back, she had tipped her little wagon over and caught her neck between the ladder, ladder rung and the wagon and was strangling herself. They screamed and yelled, 
for my dad to come quick and dad drove a horse, galloped a horse all the way to Cove to get a family doctor. She was unconscious for several hours before she came to. Every evening for one year, my dad and mother would walk out into the yard and look at the mountains and watch the sun going down. And they were so homesick for Iowa that they promised themselves that after one year they would move back to Iowa. But after the year was up, they began to think over all of the things that they had in Cove, Oregon that they didn't have to worry about. They remembered the terrible cyclones and tornadoes and the terrible lightning storms that they had back in Iowa, and they decided to never move back. Soon after this, Dad was able to sell the place, and he bought another little place out in, let's see, bought another little place a mile from the highway in Lower Cove from Uncle Willard and Aunt Lida Jasper. She was Mama's youngest sister. This place faced west. It was two miles from the little red pepper schoolhouse that my brothers and sisters went to. The folks liked this place so much better. It was four miles from where Mom's folks lived, my Grandpa Cobles. This place was on the slopes below Mount Fanny and also looked out over the valley facing southwest. It was here the spring of 1902, April the 14th, that I was born. Grandma told my mother when she took sick to be sure and send Jean after me. She was going to come and take care of me, take care of mother. Just a minute. Before school started, things began to happen. The children were sent out to give Dad the message to go after Grandma. The kids crawled in the back. The three kids crawled in the back seat. My Dad was galloping the horses on the old country dirt road. Turning a corner, my little seven-year-old brother Judd, who was standing up, flopped out. Anne and Raymond yelled, Dad, you've lost Judd. Dad just kept on going. <laughs> he soon had Grandma and was heading back. They picked up the little lost boy unhurt. When Grandma stepped in the kitchen door, she called out, Rosie, which was my mother's name, how are you? Mom's response was, come see, Mother. I have a little baby girl wrapped up in a towel. My mother was 30 years and three weeks old at the time. By the time I was eight months old, my folks had decided to sell out and move out in Wasco County and buy a small farm. They had been some hard feelings between my dad and grandpa, so they decided to move. The place was 35 miles south of the Dalles three miles from the little town of Tye Valley, Oregon, west of us, on a country road, and five miles from Shear Bridge and the Deschutes River, east of us. It was a pretty place. White River run past our family orchard, not too far, Okay. I was eight months old when the folks moved out to Wasco County on the new farm they had purchased. It was November or December of 1902. Part of the land was cleared and a lot more had to be. There was an old homestead two-story house, real old-fashioned, and a family orchard. My folks 
word German, descent. So naturally, Dad got the barn first. The folks had $3,500 cash when they left coal. Mother wanted to build the new house the first year, but a big red barn was built first when I was two and a half years old. A big eight-room white house was then erected. It was square, two stories high, nice big porch on east side and the north side. Dad had a good well. He put up a windmill and pumped water in a big tank. And from there, it was pumped into the house. In 1906, Dad bought Mom a new hat home comfort range, put coils in it, added a hot water tank, and she had hot and cold water in the house. About 1908 or nine, he put in a gas light system. We had beautiful light lights. We loved living on this farm. Mother would let us play in the sand along the river. We fished a lot, and in the winter, we would coast down the hills on sleds. They were all homemade, but could travel as fast as the store bought the sleds. We had ponies to ride, and in the winter, Dad would take us to and from school in a bobsled. They were large enough that the neighbor kids could all ride along with us, and that made us, made us have lots of fun. We always went to church on Sundays. We had a preacher living in our house a big lot of the time. Folks always brought a bunch home from church on, for Sunday dinner. Mother was an excellent cook and housekeeper. Dad, Mom, and us kids rode in a hack. The other three went horseback. When I was five years old, I got kicked in the face by a young horse. It broke my jaw and left me with quite a scar. Us kids loved our dad so much. He was all, he always had time to rock us and love us. Mother worked so hard, she never took time to sit down and hold us. That's the reason I always gave my little ones so much love. Dad and mom started having trouble. They separated when I was nine years old. I nearly cried myself to death over it. Mother moved us on a 80 acres a mile up the road with a small homestead house down on the river. We lived in there until I was ready for the seventh grade. We had lots of fun down there, but never got over losing our dad. He moved to Beaverton, Oregon and set a nephew Lou Dean up in pharmacy business. Dad bought him a drugstore, and Lou had just graduated from college as a pharmacist. Dad married a widow with three. Dad married, let's see, with three kids and lived in Beaverton for years till he passed away. Okay, you can begin. I was in Thai Valley when I entered the seventh grade, also the eighth grade. We had a bum teacher those two years. No, bum, bum teacher for the eighth grade. All the kids just gave up. Everybody flunked. He never had one pupil that passed. 